Welcome everybody. Um, my name is Sadaf Munshi. I am uh, chairing this session. I'm also chair of the Department of Linguistics at UNT. I welcome the speaker, um, um, Hideo Sawada. He's uh, uh, joining us from Japan and his, uh, the title of his presentation is on borrowed words in Langsu, an undescribed northern Burmish language. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, can I start? Yes. It looks like you're presenting the presentation uh, instead of the actual PowerPoint, like presenter mode. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, start. Uh, hello, everyone. I'd like to start my presentation. Lansu is the name of subgroup of Lone Wall, a tribe making up Kachin ethnocultural group. Lansu people have lived in several villages in. Sumprabun Township in Kachin State, Myanmar. Let me emphasize that Lansu shouldn't be confused with a variety of long war in China called Lansu in Chinese. Lansu people speak the language which is considerably different from standard long war, but both languages belong to northern subgroup of Burmish close to Burmese. Due to their no geographical environment, Lansu has borrowed a lot of vocabulary from Jinpo and also from Shan, Burmese, and several other languages. In this presentation, I give an overview of borrowed words in Lansu, mainly from the viewpoint of the path of borrowing and also the effect of borrowing on the phonology of Lansu briefly. Before arguing borrowed words, let me present the native phonology of the language. 1A presents the syllable structure of Lansu, 1B serves the inventory of initial consonants and initial medial combinations. As with most of Northern Burmish languages, Lansu initials are organized as three series of phonation type, plain, creaky, and aspirated. Stops and affricates have all three series. Nasal, laterals, and parietal approximants have only plain and creaky series. And fricatives belong to aspirated series, except vira, l, which is the plain counterpart of h. The notable feature of Lansu initials compared with other Northern Burmish languages is the absence of alveolar affricates and the palatal nasal. 1C shows Lansu rhymes. Sure without final only occurs in weak syllables. Like other Burmish languages, including Burmese, the vowel final combination matrix has not a few gaps, especially the vowel A and it doesn't combine with any final in Lansu native words. And Lansu has four tones, as in 1D. Note that 2-1 mainly co-occurs with plain initials, whereas 5-3 mostly co-occurs with creaky and aspirate initials. 2-1-2-2 have lower pitch, contrasted to 5-3 and 5-5 with higher pitch. I also show their autonym in the phonemic transcription. Uh, transcription. Lansu. In the next section, we classify the borrowed word in Lansu in respect to the original borrowing. Jinpo people are the majority of Kachin and the most closely associated with Lansu for the ethnographical, ethnogeographical reason mentioned before. Their language is the largest donor of vocabulary to Lansu. Uh, the entire area of the present Kachin state was under the sphere of influence of Thai people in 14th to 16th centuries. So, Shan and other closely related Thai languages also are one of the major origins of borrowing. Another major origin is Burmese, the official language of Myanmar. There are several other origins of borrowing, such as Lawan, Chinese, English, and Hindi. First, let us observe Jinpo origin words in Lansu. 
the phonemic notation of GIMPO forms are based on the system in Kurabe's PhD dissertation with minor rearrangement simply for ease of comparison with Lansu. Kurabe treats the three place opposition in stop initials in 2A as the combination of voice and aspiration. 2B shows lines. We see that a vowel and the final in Jinpo can occur freer than those in Lansu native phonology. The lines with final K are within parentheses because it is mostly restricted to low words, as Kurabe points out. And 2C is the list of tones with the notation used in the slide. In the next several slides, I give examples of Lansu words borrowed from Jinpo. The original Jinpo forms are based on Malan's Dictionary and Kurabe 2018. 3 to 5 show the correspondences between Lansu and Jinpo stop finals, uh, sorry, stop initials, sorry. Uh, generally, uh, Lansu plane stops correspond to Jinpo voice stop, as in each ace of 3 to 5. Lansu clicky stops correspond to Jinpo voiceless and aspirated stops, as in each Bs. And Lansu aspirated stops correspond to Jinpo voiceless aspirated stops, as in each Cs. In 5C, we see that Lansu renders Jinpo medial R to fit to Lansu native phonology. Six are the cases of affricates. Note that alveolar affricates in 6A and B are not in Lansu native phonology. Seven and eight are the cases of fricatives and nasal initials. HC is the only one example involving preglottalized nasal in Jinpo at hand. 8A is another case of introducing a new initial. In general, original Jinpo vowels are well preserved in borrowed Lansu forms, though Jinpo E with nasal final tends to be rendered as Shua, as in 8B, and sometimes as A, as in 8A. Nine are the examples containing lateral approximant and flap initials. 9B is also the case of introduction of a new initial via borrowing. 10 are the instances of borrowing from, uh, borrowing from a non-standard non Jinpo dialect. Lansu forms in 10A and B have nasal finals not found in standard Jinpo forms. In 10C, we find the difference in initial. Keita Kurabe suggests that the forms came from Wuma dialect, which Hanson called Kaku from a geographical viewpoint. 11A and B are instances of pitch height mismatch between Lansu and Jinpo. Suppose that Jinpo tones are as well classified into lower pitch tones, low and mid, and higher pitch tones, high and falling. Generally, a Lansu lower pitch tone corresponds to a Jinpo lower pitch tone, and a Lansu higher pitch tone corresponds to a Jinpo higher pitch tone. But in 11A, Lansu 2-2 irregularly corresponds to Jinpo high tone, and in 11b, Lansu 5-3 corresponds to Jinpo low tone. The causes of such mismatches remain unclear. And 12a to c summarize the sound correspondence between Jinpo original forms and Longo borrowed forms. The dashes in the table show that no instance is found in my Lansu data. Next, consider the words of Shan or Thai origin in Lansu. And the phonological system shown here is abstracted from the data in Shan dictionary resources in Sri Lang library, which is based on Sotem Moon's dictionary. 13A shows initials and initial medial combination. 11B shows lines and 11C the list of tones uh, because Sri Lang library's resources gives only tone classes by number. Uh, I assign the label and the pitch from Shintani 2000 to each tone class. Most of Thai origin words were borrowed via Jinpo to Lansu. Since such Thai origin words are far less than Jinpo origin words, I cannot give the correspondence between the initial consonant systems of Lansu and Shan. Here I merely show the correspondence for each word. In 14b, Shan fricative H corresponds to the aspirated vira stops in Lansu and Jinpo. 
Case involving Lance Paradal affricate initials needs special attention. It corresponds to Shan alveolar affricates. Lee 1977 states that prototypes and G are represented by Shans, which is TS in the slides. Nishida 1961 reconstructed the phonology of the languages recorded in Pai Yi Chinese vocabulary and Chinese Pai Yi vocabulary, both called Pai Yi Guan Yi. Nishida considers that the former one, called Pai Yi A, is a literary language, and the latter one, Pai Yi B, is a colloquial language, both in 16th century. He also seems to consider that they are older stages of modern Pai Yi, which is rather known as Du Hong Tai. Based on Chinese transcription in the texts, he reconstructs a retroflex affricate in Pai Yi A and B, which corresponds to Du Hong alveolar affricate. If we assume either that modern Shan also descended from Pai Yi A and B, or that a sound change parallel to Pai Yi occurred in Shan, and we get a natural explanation for the following, as in 16. Here, the arrow means diachronic change, and whereas the greater than sign means borrowing path. And 17 are other examples of the same kind. Shan has more vowels than Lansu, so some correspondences between Shan and Lansu vowels are many to one. In 18a, a and a in Shan correspond to Lansu a. 18b to e shows that u, 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 and o in Shan corresponds to Lansu u. Shan mid open vowels o and a correspond to Lansu o and a respectively, as in 18f and g. In 19a, the initials of Lansu and Jinpo forms don't match. Shan and aspirated stop correspond to both plain and creaky stops in Lansu. And according to Kurabe 2016b, they correspond to both voiced and voiceless and aspirated stops in Jinpo. In 90b, Lansu preserved the original pitch height in Shan, but Jinpo doesn't. It leads to the possibility that Lansu directly borrowed the word from Shan, not via Jinpo. Let me skip examples 20. Lansu shares the words in 21 not with Shan but with Du Hong. It is not impossible if the borrowing is mediated by Jinpo. Finally, let us observe Burmese origin words in Lansu. Burmese forms are based on Myanmar English Dictionary by Myanmar Language Commission. Lansu has some words similar to a modern standard Burmese form, and they must have been borrowed from Burmese recently. Forms in 22, and are not shared with Jinpo nor Shan. I regard them as examples of direct borrowing from Burmese. Note that Lansu rendered Burmese mid cross vowel O and S U. Uh, forms in 23 are shared with Jinpo, but not with Shan. I assume that Lansu borrowed them via Jinpo. On the other hand, forms in 24 are shared not with Jinpo, but with Shan. I am uncertain whether or not Lansu borrowed them via Shan. There are another group of words which looks like a literal reading of the transliteration of its written Burmese spelling. As Nishi 1999 mentions, it is inevitable to continue to use WB forms of a word as a substitute for its form in an earlier stage, but they are not the same. We have to refer inscription data as much as possible to calibrate literal reading of WB spellings. For example, Kyansa in 25A looks like the literal reading of the transliteration of its WB spelling. Notations within braces are transliterations in my own system. Inscription data shows that the word seems to have been pronounced as something like Kyansa in mid 12th century. Similar forms are tested also in Jinpo and Shan I suppose that Shan accepted the word uh, from Burmese before the final M suffered a sound change, kept it like a refrigerator, and passed it to Jinpo. 20B and C are similar examples. Uh, six, uh, 26 is a bit complicated case. 
The sham form has an alveolar fricative initial, like modern standard Burmese. It is inconceivable to think that sham borrowed the form from a modern standard Burmese. According to Bradley 2011, based on various European records, the defrication of alveolar affricates in Burmese occurred before 1855. At that time, the Burmese rhyme Y had already changed to We. So I assume a sound change in Shan framed in red, almost parallel to the change assumed in the argument on the word umbrella. If, uh, I also assume that a sound change from Y to Oi uh, occurred in Shan, we can take the case of to draw as another example of this type. Finally, consider the case of, that's it, seal. And the form as well as jinpo tatsi are related to standard Burmese tatsi. All of them are seski syllabic. On the other hand, the shan form tanshik are disyllabic and share the final n in the first syllable with, uh, uh, with the form appearing in Burmese inscriptions of 13th century. The spelling change in the word both exemplified in inscriptions and the language of Burmese Chinese vocabulary suggests that the final was not an anymore in uh, 15th century. The data set tells that Shan and Jinpo Lansu don't share the path of borrowing of the word. What did Shan borrow the word from Burmese? Because Shan preserved the opposition between mu, nu, un and has the opposition between p, t, k, but no glottis of final. Shan must have borrowed the word after the Burmese stop finals neutralized to a uh, glottis stop and before it lost the opposition between the nasal finals. We estimate that the borrowing occurred in the 13th century to early 14th century. Then when did Jinpo borrow the word from Burmese? And several sound changes occurred between the Zay seal in standard Burmese and its counterpart in uh, 13th to 14th century. Sound change A must have occurred before 15th century, in fact, from the spelling change of the word seal shown two slides ago. B1 occurred before 1780, and B2 before 1855, based on Bradley 2011. I estimate that C occurred between 16th and 18th centuries, comparing the phonology of Burmese in the end of the 18th century reconstructed by Ono and that of Mienken A of Nishida. On the other hand, the remaining sound changes, especially D and E, might have occurred at various times since the oldest inscription in the 12th century. Here, I tentatively suppose that D to F follows A to C. All the changes in the word completed before the beginning of the 20th century uh, when Hansen's dictionary was compiled. One more point to mention is that Jinpo rendered A in Burmese as ik, as the examples show, due to the absence of diphthongs with a final stop. The borrowing paths of the word seal are tentatively outlined as in 31. In the final section, let us examine the effect of borrowing on the phonology of Lan Su. 32 is the inventory of initials and initial medial combinations in Lan Su, including borrowed elements. The elements introduced via borrowing are shown in red. KR, not appeared so far, and will be presented in the next slide. 33 shows elements introduced via borrowing, not appeared so far. In 33E, Shan must have borrowed the form nu, which is assumed in an intermediate phase of a sound change in Burmese shown here. 34 shows the rhymes in Lan Su, including borrowed ones. The borrowing didn't introduce new vowels and finals, but a lot of new combinations of them, uh, which fill most gaps in the matrix of uh, verb, fi uh, verb final combinations. Note also that the final K and glottal stop are not in complementary distribution anymore if we take borrowed, borrowed words into consideration. Summary. In Lansu, the major origins of borrowing are Jinpo, Shan, and Burmese. 
If only either of Jinpo, Shan, or Burmese has a form corresponding to a Lansu form, we may take the following pass as from Jinpo or Shan or Burmese to Lansu. If Jinpo has the form corresponding to a Lansu form, and either Burmese or Shan also has the form corresponding to it, the borrowing path is from Burmese or Shan via Jinpo to Lansu, though there could be several exceptions. If both Burmese and Shan have the corresponding form, the path of borrowing is not necessarily a straight line. Shan and Jinpo or Lansu might have borrowed the word from Burmese respectively. And there are roughly two types of forms of a modern standard Burmese word, which might be related to Lansu, Jinpo, or Shan form. One is its phonetic form, and the other is literal reading of the transliteration of its WB spelling as a substitute for its form in an earlier stage of Burmese. A well established inscriptional form should replace the latter. If a form which Lansu, Jinpo, or Shan borrowed is related to the latter, the initial, phrase, uh, initial phase of borrowing must have occurred earlier than in the case involving the former. Borrowing brought several initials and clusters with medial R to Lansu. It didn't introduce new vowels and finals, but a lot of new combination of them, uh, filling most gaps in the matrix of vowel final combinations. Thank you for, so much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Um... We have about five, sorry, we have about five minutes for questions and comments. Um, anyone ask, uh, who has a question can unmute themselves and please present your question. Uh, so I have a, a, just a general question. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the very detailed analysis of the phonology uh, behind loan words. What could you could you speak a little bit to the extra linguistic? Uh, yeah, extra linguistic. So the some of the um, environmental factors that you think have contributed to this kind of contact. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so I uh, I mentioned that uh, for Lansu is a, a subgroup of Longwo, but yeah. uh, Lansu is uh, Lansu depart from the rest of Longwo people and is uh, surrounded by Jinpo people. I think it is the uh, ling extra linguistic situation uh, accelerating the um, borrowing. Uh, you have you have some loan words there that seem to reflect kind of official official domains of language use uh, so perhaps the, the contact is happening like in through these venues through these channels mm, uh, i am not sure the uh, what official you means had, like, a, one a case of the word stamp or seal and and these mm -hmm. kinds of examples so i'm uh, just i like i like to think about yeah language contact and loan words uh, like in, in kind of what domains are we seeing these loans happening? So, um, I'm sorry, and I, I have no idea. Uh, uh, no you had a, yes, seal, stamp, and metal. These these types of um, uh -huh, yeah. examples. Seal. Um, that, that's like an official seal, right? A seal that would be used on documents. Yes, I think so. It, it originally it means official seal, and, and stamp yeah, that's is right. uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Could we go to the slide where how you have the phonemic inventory again? Huh? What? Could we go to the slide where you have the phonemic inventory again? Uh, Lansu phonemic inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, just a moment. I think it was a uh, twenty-five or something. I just wanted to look at the inventory. I'm sorry, I many animations. So. I, think, yeah, I think it was uh, in the increasing, increasing. You you went in the uh, increasing, 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 I think yeah. it was number twenty five. I think page twenty five. Yes. I just wanted to like look at the inventory. Yeah. 
It was probably page 25 or something like that. After this, maybe after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, I got it. Got it. Twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah, I want. I just wanted to take a look at this. So you said that uh, including borrowed ones. So are there any uh, phonemes that are entirely borrowed? Entirely borrowed. Are the are the ones in red? Yes, all of uh, all of the um, element in red are uh, entirely borrowed. Okay, I get. It. Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you. And. Uh, This is a lime. Mm. Not too many limes, but uh, in fact, I, I, as I mentioned, only the uh, new combination is introduced, not vowel mm. and new final here. I see. Okay. How intense has the contact been? Like, how? What's the intensity of contact like in these intensity. lines? Um. So. Uh, uh, Kachin languages other than Jinpo uh, have more or less uh, borrowing element from uh, Jinpo or Shan, maybe, but uh, the intensity of the, um, uh, as for, so what shall I say, um, Lansu is the most affected language uh, from Jinpo, I think, compared with other Kachin, uh, uh, other non Jinpo Kachin languages. So you think it's more affected by contact? More affected by con yes, I think so. so. What could be the reason? Is there some uh, sociolinguistic reason for that? Why is this language more affected? Uh, uh, simply, yeah, uh, what I mentioned, the Lansu is uh, separated from the, the rest of uh, Lomo groups and uh, surrounded by Jinpo. I think it is the main reason. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Do we have any more time? Um, we, we do have a couple more minutes if anyone has questions. If not, then I have an announcement. <laughs> so I, I made this announcement earlier also, but we have um, uh, a social going on at 9.30. Like that means in 30 minutes, right? Margie? Is that after 30 minutes? Correct, correct, yep. Yes, after so the next. We, maybe we can share that link again because some people may just have joined uh, this presentation. Um, okay. Can you share that link to everybody? Because some people who joined later, they cannot see previous links. I see it now. Okay, good. And, uh, I think I just posted it again. Is this correct? <clears throat> so, any other comments, questions, anything? We have two more minutes. <laughs> so, can I ask a, a question? Yes, yeah, sure, please. Uh, so, I would like to ask about semantics. So, which semantic field? Uh, uh, more common in the long uh, lexicon of Lansu, for example, religion or some food or something. Um, and as far as I, as far as studied uh, the effect, effect of borrowing is pervasive in almost all domain. So not only the basic vocabulary, but uh, uh, both basic, uh, not only the higher vocabulary, but also basic vocabulary. For example, sometimes uh, for body part, uh, for example, uh, lung and uh, the other body part, uh, or uh, many, uh, many vocabulary uh, of natural, uh, uh, natural object and so on. So I think uh, it is very, really purposive. Okay. Yeah, this is my impression. Thank you very much. So the fact that body part is also borrowed and so that's that the contact is was very has been very <laughs> intensive right uh, yeah thank you very much thank you for the question um kita
Uh, and thank you very much, um, Hideo. Is that how you pronounce your name? How yeah, Hideo. You? Okay, thank you. Thank you, it was a very good presentation, very interesting data, a lot of um, analysis even. Thanks for, for your presentation today.